be seated for the psalm. be seated for the lesson. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Deuteronomy. This entire commandment that I command you today, you must diligently observe so that you may live and increase, 
and go in and occupy the land that the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. The clothes on your back did not wear out, and your feet did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a parent disciplines a child, so the Lord God disciplines you. Therefore, keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Here endeth the Old Testament reading.
The New Testament lesson is taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters, not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Here ended the New Testament lesson.
we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the name of God, our Creator, Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Sustainer. Amen. I don't know about you all, but our reading from Deuteronomy was a joy killer for the Israelites. They are being told that they were in the wilderness for 40 years to humble them, to test them, to know what was truly in their hearts. God wanted to know if they would keep the commandments. I can't imagine that made them feel good, and that was a really long time to be grounded. They were made to feel hungry so they would know that you don't live by food alone. Wow, I can't imagine how miserable the Israelites felt. But then the tone of the reading shifts, and we are told that the Israelites were giving good fitting clothes and their feet did not swell. To appreciate this, we need to understand that the Israelites didn't have the luxury of wearing clothes from designers who craft soft and luxurious clothes made out of silk. They also didn't have cars or Ubers or parents to transport them. Their feet did the walking. So it was a luxury to not have swollen feet at the end of a journey. Why the shift from being made to feel miserable to feeling good? Why were the Israelites stuck in the wilderness for 40 years enduring harsh conditions and then treated like royalty? We are told that God did all these things to discipline the Israelites as a parent disciplines a child. Now, let me ask you a question. Who in their right mind likes this text? <laughs> okay, I hope we're all in agreement that this is a bear of a text, but there is light amid all the darkness, all the, in the wilderness for the Israelites. And then there is one for us today when we feel we're in the same place. As much as we may not like it, life has wilderness periods. If you are in high school, and that might be some of you, there are periods when you just don't like what's happening in your life. If you are a middle-aged or older person, there are periods when you don't like what's happening in your life. Your home life is chaotic. Your classes are difficult or boring. Your siblings or parents are pains. If you're in the other age categories, your job is difficult or you don't have one. You have rocky relationship with family members, friends, or work colleagues, and you feel overwhelmed by all that's being asked or demanded of you by your family and your work life associates or your parents. You feel that you are in the wilderness but there is a light amid the darkness of the wilderness. You're probably saying, come on, Cheryl, get to the good part, right? To get to the good part, the change where the Israelites enjoy fine clothes and feet that didn't swell, the change where we don't feel that we are in the wilderness of life, a dark pit, involves an attitude change. It involves us rethinking how we are handling our life. Whether we're a student, a professional, a retiree, or even a priest. And doing things differently. Let me say that again. It involves rethinking how we're handling our life. And doing things differently. I like to equate this process to spring training like the professional baseball players do every spring, or putting together a portfolio if you are an artist or a musician. Let me explain. Why do we go through Lent every year? Why do athletes start their training each year with coming back to the basics? 
Why does an artist who starts with a clean palette come back to the primary colors? Or the musicians who begin a new piece go back to scales? We all know the answer with regard to athletes, artists, and musicians. The basics are the underlying fundamentals of their craft. Coming back to God's commandments and remembering to forgive and to ask for forgiveness, loving other people. In other words, the fundamentals of being Christian and living a good life. We need to remind ourselves to come back to the basics. The reason the Israelites were in the wilderness was because they were not in their best shape. God had rescued them from Pharaoh and the life of slavery in Egypt, and yet they kept complaining about their life. They grumbled, mumbled, sighed, etc. When we're in the wilderness, we do the same thing, right? We might complain that our teachers are really dumb or mean. We might complain that our boss is totally out of touch with reality and has no idea of good decision making. We might complain that our children drive us crazy or that our parents are so old school, old fashioned, or boring. You get my point. The Israelites are looking at their life and we are too from the perspective that we know best. And we want comfort. We want ease. We want an easy life. The reality is, is that life, school, work is challenging. There are obstacles we must endure to get us to the finish line. And crossing the finish line mean, means doing what God has called us to do in this life, becoming the person God has created us to be. We can't do it on our own. We need guidance. We need training. We need to get back to the basics. We need to discipline our mind, our body, and our souls. That's spring training. We need to get rid of the things that don't help us, the negative attitudes, not forgiving others, not helping others, not loving others wholeheartedly, and work on being the kind of person that God envisions us to be. If you're an artist, it means only putting in the portfolio what reflects our best artistic self. If you're a musician, it means getting the technique, the tempo, the posture right, so you can play or sing music that is pitch perfect. When our attitude and our actions are in alignment with God's plan for us, everything falls into place. If we are an athlete, we get our stride. If we're an artist, we make incredible art. If we are a musician, we make beautiful music. In other words, we are who God created us to be. We can deal with life's ups and downs because we're walking with Jesus. Our clothes are super soft. Our shoes fit perfectly. This Lent, when you are feeling that you are in the wilderness, when you feel exasperated with life, think spring training and get back to the basics and get in shape with God. God loves you and wants you to be your best self. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to the best kept secret in the Greenwich community, Coral Evensong. I think that I have to tell you all, this is such a bomb for my soul, and I am so grateful to every one of you. Thank you for this beautiful music. And I ask that all of you help us to promote this wonderful service on Thursday evenings at 6.30 and also on Sunday evenings at 5. So if you would invite friends, we would be so grateful because this is spectacular. Don't you agree? They're all nodding. Trust me.
I have five announcements and I'll do them quick. First tonight, Monday night at the rectory, um, Merrick is doing The Wounded Healer by Henry Nowen. It's a spiritual classic. Please come and attend at 7 p.m. Thursday night, exciting night for the women in the congregation. Can you tell I got real excited? Um, we have, the topic is the changing relationship between mothers and daughters. The changing relationship between mothers and daughters. You don't want to miss this talk. Um, talk. 7 p.m. inside at the Tomes Higgins house. Yes, I think I caught some people's attention, okay? On Saturday morning, the men are gonna gather at the Tomes Higgins house, and one of my favorite priests in the diocese, Peter Walsh, is going to speak to the men. And so that's at 8.30. But then we have the grand finale, Saturday night at 5 p.m. Everybody's gonna be here, and that is for the concert by Mr. Jonathan Vaughn. <laughs> So we hope you can join us for these and other things that are listed in your order of service. Let us pray. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thy angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. We pray for all those who have been commended to us on our prayer list, and we also add this day, Danielle. Almighty God, who hath given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and who hath promised through thy well-beloved Son that when in two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We say together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen.
blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.